Hey everyone, Dan here. We are just before market close on Thursday, July 8th. Today we're going to take our daily look at SoFi. Before we get into it, if you enjoy these videos, please hit the like and subscribe button. It helps a lot. And also, um, I am looking to grow the channel. So if you share stock videos or information on Reddit or Twitter or Facebook and you would like to share this there, I would really appreciate it. It doesn't have to be there. It could be anywhere that you talk or share stock info. Um, I would appreciate this video or any of my other videos that you find interesting. Share, share away. Um, okay, so so far, um, you know, obviously today in the markets there was. Oop, I don't want to go to the screener. Go to the markets. A lot of kind of fud entering the market today. Um, you know, fear, uncertainty, and doubts uh, around. I guess you know several things. Um, growing concerns around. Uh, COVID still and, um, uh, you know, bond yields and um, <laughs> if there's going to be interest, I think those things are still kind of like lingering. Um, just a general sense of feeling like, is the market overextended? Um, and a lot of this obviously coming down like a hammer on growth stocks in general. Um, you see here, you know, the major indices is still down a percent about a percent or more uh, as we go into close out the day. Um, and so, you know, given that context, I do think that SoFi held up pretty well today. Um, and, you know, I, I don't think that it's anything to sneeze at in terms of, you know, coming in really beaten down uh, in the pre-market, leaving this big gap to fill here, which, you know, hopefully it does. Um and, and doing its level best to regain that 1633 support and, and try to like get something going for itself. Um, you know, it is caught still underneath this downtrend, which it, which it keeps trying to pop itself out of, but then just gets sucked back down into it or is basically following it down, um, you know, on top of it. And so, you know, I think that that does need to be its next big move, like we talked about yesterday. Um, if it can come up and fill this gap and get itself back to 17, um, you know, in the in the after hours or in the pre-market tomorrow or tomorrow early on in the day, I think that does give it a really good opportunity to take a run at 18 in the coming days. Um, you know, the bearish alternative to that is that it continues to go ahead and, and spill down uh, this downtrend line that it seems to want to follow this white one here um, and, you know, kind of like bat itself around between these two. You know, obviously the SoFi bulls don't want to see that happen, but, uh, you know, stocks don't often do, as we've grown accustomed to a SoFi, don't often do what we want them to do. Um, if it ends up continuing falling down in this wedge, um, it's going to make its way down to just under 15 before it pops itself out of there. Now, what it does when it pops itself out of there, if it even comes to that, you know, is anybody's guess. We would have to see what it's doing at that moment and sort of, you know, if there are additional catalysts coming into play. Um, like I said, there's a lot of factors coming up. There's the bank charter, there's Robinhood IPO and the impact that that might have. There's earnings coming probably in August. Somebody left me a comment that the CEO was on some news channel and he, he said the CEO had indicated, I think, August 23rd. I don't know. Don't don't take that to heart. Um, but previously we were thinking uh, August 11th was the date because that showed up a couple of places. But earnings dates are always estimated until the company itself puts out an announcement that this is when we will release our earnings. Um, so just keep in mind, these are all just kind of like area, like date ranges. Um, even if they say August 11th or August 23rd, like that's just sort of like around that date. So wait to hear it from the company itself in an announcement before you start kind of trying to manage any type of trade or strategy based on an earnings date. Um, but, you know, I'll, I'll be doing additional videos in the, in the coming days and weeks about those catalysts and how they might impact or influence the stock price. I did one on earnings a few days ago, so you can see that if you scroll back. Oh, I now have a SoFi playlist because <laughs> I'm doing so many SoFi videos, five a week or more, um, that it just made sense to put them all in one place. So if you want to go in there and dig through and see, you know, a bunch of them are obviously old daily analyses, but 
you know, if you think those will help you for any reason, you know, feel free. But also there's a ton of stuff in there on the fails to deliver and the short interest on the earnings, um, you know, a, a bunch of different types of factors that, that we've seen come into play with SoFi. So feel free to dig through there. I'll put that link in the description below um, if you want to, to poke around there and see if anything tickles your fancy. But you know, our price range is here still, you know, really in, in, in effect. Um, we have this first immediate support at 1632 if it needs it. If not, we're probably looking somewhere around 1536. And if not, probably looking somewhere around 14 and a half. Um, that said, this would wedge out um, in about a week, actually. Uh, this would wedge out uh, in the high 14s. Uh, if it continues down this path. So just keep that sort of in the back of your mind until it breaks out of this wedge. Um, that is sort of like, you know, where we would expect it to be in about a week. Um, yeah, I know that. <laughs> I know the bulls don't want to hear that, but I, you know, I don't want to just seem overly positive on SoFi. Um, uh, from the uh, indicator's perspective, as you would imagine, it's an oversold territory. I mean, look what's been going on for the last uh, few weeks. And, um, you know, that after bouncing just out of oversold territory, this is the same problem. I'm not sure if I described this last night or not, but something you need to be really cautious of when something leaves overbought or oversold on the RSI is what it does if and when it gets to the mid-range. Mid-range is often like a telling sign. Um you know, if it can't push and establish above the mid range, there's a strong likelihood that it's coming back down close to or through oversold again. Uh, same thing to the upside. When it comes through overbought, comes back down. If it holds really well, the mid range is a good chance that it's going to make a, another run up at overbought. Uh, this one here is a bit of an outlier where it did come down all the way to 40 and then it made another run up to just barely overbought. I think. Um, yeah, just barely overbought. And then it came down, couldn't hold the mid midline again. And that time it came down nearly to oversold. So more like what I would expect, but just be cautious, you know, until this, I mean, hopefully by now you're being cautious. And so far we've seen, I mean, look at these wild swings, but, um, you know, if, if we can't get this RSI to establish over the midline, it's going to have, you know, a really hard time doing anything except for curling back down toward this oversold range again. And, um, you know, that would obviously continue to push the price down, um, or that indicator would exemplify the pushing of the price down further. You know, again, probably not surprising, but as we see, like, SoFi to the upside was relatively overextended in these areas, um, it's now relatively overextended to the downside. Um, um, be keeping an eye on this for some bullish divergence potentially in the near future. That would be when you are making um, a, a lower low here, but the MACD actually comes up. So um, something like you see a lower low from here to here. Uh, you see the MACD went from 0.52 down to 0.56. Those are negative numbers, so that's why the 0.56 is lower. Um, but if we saw it if we saw the MACD higher, then we would have a bullish divergence. So I'm going to be watching that a bit more um, carefully than I have been recently uh, to see if we can get a bullish divergence there. I know we spotted some before, I think, in IPOE, I recall. You know, it would have been several months ago at this point, but proved out pretty well at, at that point. Um, one thing on the order flow side of things, you know, large-scale outflow continues to be kind of an issue with SoFi. No large-scale buys coming in. Um, just no inflow uh, of large order uh, magnitude. So that's obviously also kind of like a kick in the pants um, to this one, keeping the price down because just all those large orders are just sell, sell, sell. So hopefully as we get some distance from the lockup and, you know, folks kind of take profits or whatever it is that they're doing, um, you know, that kind of subsides. Uh, and if there's just some more like, knowledge spreading about SoFi and what it is that they're doing and, and the potential that they have and that sort of thing, hopefully uh, institutions and, and things like that will step in and and produce some large-scale orders for us. I think that would also help stabilize the price a bit. You know, if we got some, some pretty heavy institutional interest, um, that would be nice. On the data side of things, um, 
we can look here. We do have uh, the shorts coming in pretty actively yesterday, pushing this short volume ratio nearly to 30, which 30 is extremely high. Mid to high 20s is very, very high as it is. Um, and we see it sort of picking up steam here. So again, uh, I didn't mention this yet this video, but to the extent that there's going to be some pretty heavy buying tomorrow by anyone who has deliveries that they need to produce by July 14th. I would expect them to do that tomorrow, which is the 9th, um, in order to have, uh, well, Saturday, Sunday don't count, and then Monday would be the 12th, so that would, could then uh, settle on the 12th and the 13th, so Monday, Tuesday of next week, and then they could deliver that share before it becomes an aged fail on 714. So this, again, presupposes that you know, a bunch of these are even still outstanding and or that the, the person who failed to deliver doesn't actually have a share to deliver and needs to go buy it on the open market. And even then, it would have to be a pretty large percentage of those fails um, in order to really move the price, uh, in my opinion. But um, if they did do that as a strategic fail to deliver, if you will, um, you know, they did a pretty good job because they would have sold those shares uh, 614. They would have sold that for about what 22 bucks, 23 bucks, and and now they'd be buying it back at 16 and some change. So, you know, I was I've been saying all along I would expect those big buys to come in if they are going to move the price at all of SoFi um, toward the end of the day today. Obviously, we didn't really see that, um, or uh, toward the beginning of the day tomorrow. I wouldn't. I mean, they could wait until the end of the day. It probably doesn't super change the um, the settlement period for them. But, uh, you know, I guess we'll, we'll watch it throughout the day tomorrow and see if there's a bunch of sort of like um, surprising buy pressure coming into SoFi, uh, seemingly out of nowhere, like we saw here, for example, um, or even some of this run here. Uh, if we see something like that and it's sort of like, why, like what, what is all this? You know, then we can think it's probably that. If it flops, then it flops. You know, I've been saying all along, hey, here's something we should be watching, but this all presupposes that this theory, this hypothesis, is even correct. Which there's not really a way to know. It's just that this amount of fails to deliver stands out for sure. So, anyway, to the extent to which um, any fails are trying to produce a lower price in order to buy it back. Um, to be able to cover next week or to be able to deliver next week, um, you know, they could be more actively coming in in order to try to drive that down further, get the cheapest price possible. Um, again, just a hypothesis. Do your own due diligence. <laughs> Figure out what you think. Um, on the more granular side of things, you know, throughout the day today, basically we saw from interactive brokers at least, um, there was about 10 million available shares to borrow as of close yesterday, and not a smidge got touched today. Nothing got touched. Um, the fee started to creep up though, so I do wonder if there were some equal order sizes coming in in terms of like covering and then uh, reborrowing or covering and fresh borrowing um, that just sort of netted out to zero, but there was actual activity taking place there. Um, or potentially elsewhere in the market, there was, there have has been some pretty heavy borrowing. And so that's why the fee is, is creeping up on interactive brokers side of things as well. Um, lastly, you know, to the extent to which retail is helping drive interest and price action in SoFi, um, it is losing some ground here on, uh, well, according to Swaggy Stocks. Um, so it's getting pushed down here to what, the sixth? Yeah, one, two, three, four, five, six. Um, so consuming about almost six percent of the comment volume at the moment. Um, that said, sentiment, you know, bullish sentiment eighty nine, or sentiment twenty three. So those retail traders who are commenting on it still seem relatively bullish. Um, so take that <laughs> to mean whatever you think it will. But um, there's just a lot of factors in play. So trying to cover bases as we try to decide and decipher what's going on but uh we'll keep watching it obviously and tomorrow we'll have another video um and sort of work through what's happening then but uh it'll be an interesting one if there does happen to be some kind of inexplicable big buying pressure coming in tomorrow but 
Uh, I was kind of hoping if it was going to happen, that it would happen near close today, but obviously it didn't. So that entire theory could potentially be bust. We will know soon enough. All right. Well, I hope you all are having a good trading week and that you close out the week strong tomorrow. I wish you the best of luck. And thanks a bunch for watching, sharing, liking, subscribing, commenting, all that jazz. I appreciate it. And with that, I will see you in the next video.